Uh, thank you for being here. I know it's Wednesday night. I know several of you were working late. Uh, a couple people just came in that were working late but made it over here anyway. I appreciate y'all very, 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 very much as friends, as compatriots, um, as fellow travelers. Thank you very, very, very much. There's not a single one of y'all that I would not call in the middle of a five alarm fire. Not a single one of you that I would not call. That's, that's high praise. That's a country girl speaking. High praise. If I had a seven alarm fire in my life, I would call every one of you and say, if I got you on speed dial, I promise. Um, the last story, I've got to do it fast because I've only got about 10 minutes here. It's a fun story. So sorry for doing two big old huge dramatic stories in a row there. Uh, but I, both of those stories, not very many people, not very many people have heard them. And uh, they were big events in Bynum. You know, the mill fire, the dog rescue. You know, it's a big event. Um, dogs are real important to us in Bynum. Um, this one is fun. It's about Shakori Hills. And I love Shakur Hills. And, uh, you know, as most of you know, I've had Lyme disease the last couple of years, so I've not been able to participate as much as I'd like to. But I still go and I still perform. I just... Um, Normally what would happen, and this is what happened that, this weekend, I'm going to tell you the story about, me and Carol, my compatriot, my sidekick, my assi trusty assistant, and sometime up-and-coming storyteller, she's really, really good. In fact, I probably I could put her up stage here on stage and she could tell you some stories and make you hurt. You'd laugh so hard. Um, and she's quiet. That's what makes her really, I mean, seriously, kill you funny. Um, but we go out to Shakori, and we show up, and there are interns and assistants that get their little red wagons, and they get all the stuff out of my truck, all the camping gear out of my truck. And we go back to the Creekside East camping area, which is supposed to be quieter than the other camping areas because it's a family camping area. It's really not, but that's what they say. And we, they pitch our tents for us. And they help us unpack, and they do anything and everything that I need. And, and I get to be what they, they start calling, they started calling me the rock star storyteller. Because if they, it was raining at the, in the kids' tent, they were going to have some kind of a activity like paper mache or tie-dyeing that they were going to have to do outside, or even bubble blowing. If it's raining hard, you can't do giant bubble blowing with, in torrential rain and so what they do they the director of the kids tent and all the assistants that work there they have my phone number programmed on steed speed dial on their kia c 630s <laughs> and if they get into a situation where the materials are not working out or they get too many kids to do that one activity or it's raining or somebody doesn't show up on time they call Cindy speed dial rock star storyteller I need you to get kids tent stat pronto now and I'd say something like well we're over on the meta stage watching the Lone Canyon Rangers and 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 they're, I, we're sending the golf cart for you and so I have a special wrist brand so I can go up to the hospitality tent and eat whenever I want. I have a special wrist band so I can go in the house and actually use a flush toilet and take, even take a shower in a real bathroom if I want, which I can't do at my own house in my own, you know. Uh -huh. But I have this special purple wristband on my wrist. It's, you know, glued on there for the weekend. And it's a performer wristband. I could go to the hospitality area behind the meta stage if I want to and hang out with, you know, Sly and the Family Stone, if that's who's playing. I, I did that in Miami. I did. So, um, anyway, so they send the golf cart. And this is a lifelong dream, y'all. I, I did not know it, but I was, I was a storyteller, and I'd go to all these music festivals, and I'd go to street fairs where there's all these music groups, and I'd even go to open mics, and the music, they would say, okay, you're a comedian, you're going to get three minutes. And, but if you were a musical act at an open mic, you'd get ten minutes. And these fellas with the musical act, they would go up on stage or the, 
open mic. And they would stand up there five or eight minutes playing with the microphones and trying to get the guitar. And then they would play for ten minutes, and then they'd spend another five minutes getting their guitar unplugged and put back in the case and I would, and then and then they'd come off stage and then they would call up the next musician who would spend five or eight minutes so the musicians are running like 20 minutes I show up I don't have to tune up no guitar I just need my eyebrows yeah yeah that's all I need my hands my luscious body and my eyebrows and I uh, storyteller well equipped some bright pink underwear helps sometimes so, but anyway, I go to, but I'd go to these music festivals, I'd have to deal with musicians, 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 and I'd always be just sort of shuttled around. I had to fight to get like the, the hospitality pass to go to get food. I had to fight to get a special tent cap and pass so I didn't have to pay for it. I had to fight to get, that was a big fight, to get a performer spot in the performer parking lot. But Shakori Hills, they finally figured out I was awesome and excellent. And I'm really good at entertaining children for hours and hours and hours and a, a rainstorm. And they were like, oh, no, you're giving her a full four-day weekend, all expenses paid, pass, camping, parking pass, RV spot, whatever she wants. They, they don't mess with that woman that runs children's tent. Mm -mm, no, they don't. So anyway, so they show up at the meta tent, meta stage. I get in this golf cart, and it says, a little cardboard sign on the front says performer. And so not only am I a performer with my purple wristband, which some people don't even know about at Shakori Hills. They think their wristband's green or blue, and, but mine have to be purple, no big deal. Well, when you get in a golf cart with a purple wristband, and you're not the one driving, and you got on nice clothes like I usually do, and even if I'm a Shakori and it's muddy, and there's a little cardboard sign on the front that says performer, they know I am a performer. I am. I really am. So we would go zooming from day after day after day, all four days of Shakori. I go zooming back and forth and back and forth and around, and I'm doing the little queen wave. And, and along the way, I'm seeing passing people I know. I go, hey, Scotty. Hey, Diane. <laughs> but the best part, y'all, the best part had nothing to do with fame or status or hospitality tent wristband. It had to do with these kids that would be popping out of tents and behind trees and from playing hopscotch and doing giant bubbles or poi or fights with laser swords or whatever. They would pop up and go, oh, oh, that's Cynthia. She's a rock star storyteller. Hey, Cynthia. Hey. And they'd be jumping up and down to get... And I'd be going, hey, darlings, I love you, I love you, I love you. It's all about love, y'all. It ain't got nothing to do with fame or status or respect. It's all about love. I love those kids with all my heart. And the kids know that, and that's why we have such a good time. So anyway, we get down to the last day of Shakori, and I get up, and I've got to talk fast. And it's threatening rain. A little bit of storm. Carol is very smart. She gets up. She drops her tent. She gets everything wrapped up. She makes about two trips to the truck to take things back, to get it in the dry. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm a performer. I've got a show at 11 o'clock from 11 to 1.30. And I, we've got to go get some breakfast, and I must have some coffee, and I've got to get my lipstick on. <laughs> and so I go over to the, the blue port of john to do my morning business, wearing my boo-boo dress. Boo-boo dress is a perfect garment to take camp, and especially if because I could put on my rhinestone sunglasses and my bright flowered boo-boo dress, otherwise known as moo-moo, and I can go through a campsite with my queenly wave going, good morning, happy Shakori, happy Shakori. They, ain't, they don't have no idea whether I got anything on underneath that boo-boo dress or not. And I get over to the blue port of john and there's four bluegrass musician standing in front of it playing dueling banjos. And I, I have a strict rule, no bluegrass before 9.30. <laughs> deaf, deaf. 
And I'm trying to just go to the bathroom. And I finally push the banjo player and the mandolin guy out of the way. And so, excuse me, bros, I got to go to the bathroom. And they finally move and let me in. And I go in there. And I'm sitting in this blue plastic box trying to do my business with dueling banjos going on outside. But anyway, I get back to the tent, I get my clothes on, get my lipstick on, we go get some coffee, some breakfast, 11 o'clock we have a show, everything is wonderful, the kids come up and hug me afterwards, everybody has, they have introduced me as they had to introduce me all weekend long as the rock star storyteller. We have a fabulous time, we bring down the tent at the cabaret tent, and me and Casey Knees, the other storyteller, we have a great, great time fantastic the show is over at like 1 15 and I hug the last kids goodbye give them some more flyers of color and stuff whatever and turn around and the skies open up and it starts raining chuckers it's coming down in buckets and it's pouring and it's pouring and I look over there at Carol who had been the like the grasshopper you know that had done her the, actually, I was the grasshopper. She was the ant that had done, got up and been the worker. I had left my tent up out in the woods with the down comforter, down sleeping bag, all my clothes, all my stuff, and it's getting rained on. And I, it's okay because I've got a poncho and I've got an umbrella, and we couldn't find somebody with a golf cart, so we actually had to walk out there in the wood to Creekside East and get to my get to Carol's camping spot is empty. Mine is still, you know, all set up with housekeeping there. So I go in and try to take down a tent and pack everything up, and everything's getting wet, and I actually take the poncho off to, so I can wrap up the down sleeping bag so it won't get soaked and wet and weigh 500 pounds. And I knock the tent down, and then I had, of course, you have to drop an umbrella if you're knocking a tent down. You can't knock, can't. So I end up getting soaked absolutely through to the skin, wet beyond wet. And the whole time I'm thinking, so much for being a rock star storyteller. You can't even put your tent down before it starts raining when they say there's a 99% chance of storms today. But Carol is very, very patient with me, and she carries load after load back to the truck. We finally take the last load up, and like I said, I'm wet. I am muddy up to here, and I haven't got paid yet. And there's one thing about rock star storytellers. No matter where we go, we usually get paid. And so I walk down there to the ticket booth, and they write me a check. And uh, I take a Ziploc bag out, and I put it in there, and I put it in my bra. And I look around at Carol, and I said, you know, Carol, we're dripping wet, and it's still pouring rain. And I said, I don't want to end the weekend like this. I'm, I'm a rock star storyteller, and all I've got is a, a truck full of wet, sloppy, muddy camping equipment that's going to take me days to sort out and and let's go back up to the hospitality tent get a sandwich a cup of coffee or something and say hey, goodbye to everybody and give everybody a good hug and that's how we're going to end this weekend not worrying about camping equipment that's gotten soaked and Carol's like okay all right we'll go back up to the hospitality so we go back up to the hospitality tent we make us a little cold sandwich on white bread because that's all they had out. There's nobody there. There is, I wait. I look over at the house. There's nobody at the house. We could hear the Zydeco band going in the dance tent, Don on the Buffalo. We could hear them making the announcement, the meta stage is closed for the afternoon. All concerts are going to be moved to the dance tent for the night because this rain ain't going to quit. And I thought, huh. I am just so sad. This has been a perfect, wonderful, glorious rock star storyteller weekend, and here it is ending with me being just drowned. And then I saw the Mud Babies. It was a family of four, and at first I, could, I thought they had on like a modern dance troupe with makeup on all over their bodies. They were brown from head to toe. And then I couldn't figure out if they, were, they had rolled in the mud on purpose or if one had jumped in the mud or somebody had fallen and the rest of them had jumped in in solidarity. Anyway, the mud babies were standing out there, a family of four, in the rain, and they were in relishing every drop just like this.
head to toe, you couldn't see anything but their eyeballs covered in mud. And I said, doggone it, I am a rock star storyteller. Somebody can, enjoy, what is it but a little bit of rain? And I walked over and grabbed a paper plate. Our bodies don't mind being rained on or about our heads hate it. And I slapped a paper plate on my head and I sat down my little cup of coffee because I was done with it. And with the Zydeco music playing in the dance tent, I danced my way out of Shakori Hills. I come down the road and there was a tractor coming along calling people he had to stop. And I sashayed and I do si doed and I had on what I called my drindle skirt. It's what I call my hippie skirt. I twirled and I twirled and I twirled. And I skipped and I hopped and I jumped. And I got a little dizzy there. And all of a sudden, people started looking up, and they were all hunched over in their umbrellas or their ponchos, and they were like this. Like I said, the rain was just beating us, just beating us. And I, had, and I was having the time of my life, absolutely, positively, fantastic time of my life. And I danced around the mud and over and under and around the mud puddles. The Zydeco music played on. And people that were hunched over in their ponchos, they looked up, and all of a sudden it was like the weight of the world dropped off of them. They would throw their heads back and laugh. One person said, oh, my gosh, I wish I had a camera. Someone else says, oh, my stars, she looks so happy. And then finally someone says, oh, my goodness, she's so beautiful. And I swear, that moment, I have never felt more beautiful in my entire life. I danced my way all the way out to the parking lot, and there's an old fella standing out there. All I could see was a gray dreadlock beard, and he had on his army green poncho. And he kind of looks up a little bit as we come, and I saw this one piercing blue eye look out from underneath that poncho hood. And again, him too. His head came up, and his shoulders went back. And he pulled his poncho hood off and he threw his head back and he laughed up into the sky and he threw his arms out and he spun around too. And he come back up and he looked at me right straight in the face and he said, that's right, girl. You dance in the rain and sing in the sunshine and don't ever miss an opportunity to enjoy life. And that's where I will leave us tonight dance in the rain, and sing in the sunshine, and don't ever miss an opportunity to enjoy life. Thank you very, very much.